today we are going to talk about prostaglandins so this the name prostaglandin derived from the prostate gland when prostaglandin was first isolated from the semen or seminal fluid in 1935 by the swedish physiologist and that's why the name is the prostaglandin because it is derived from or synthesized from the prostate gland and particularly it was isolated from the seminal fluid in 1971 it was determined that aspirin like drugs could inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins aspirin like drugs or nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs they could inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins they act by inhibiting the synthesis of prostaglandins then after that various biochemists they jointly received the nobel prize in 1982 in physiology and medicine for their research on the prostaglandins they got the nobel prize for their work or research on the prostaglandin now these prostaglandins are the products of long chain fatty acid these are the long chain fatty acid and particularly these prostaglandins and thromboxane prostaglandin then thromboxane they are synthesized from the arachidonic acid and this arachidonic acid is obtained from the membrane phospholipid with the help of phospholipase a2 means phospholipase a2 is the rate limiting enzyme in the synthesis of prostaglandins right prostaglandins and thromboxane a2 they are synthesized from which acid arachidonic acid and this arachidonic acid is obtained from membrane phospholipid with the help of enzyme phospholipase a2 so we can say that this phospholipase a2 is the rate limiting enzyme in the synthesis of prostaglandins now the main prostaglandins in humans are pge2 pgf2 alpha and pgi2 which is a prostacycline so these are the main prostaglandins that we have pge2 pgf2 alpha and pgi2 prostaglandins they are obtained from arachidonic acid with the help of enzyme cyclooxygenase and leukotriens they are obtained from the arachidonic acid with the help of enzyme lipooxygenase we got prostaglandins with the help of cyclooxygenase leukotriens with the help of lipooxygenase and both will uh, derived from the or obtained from the arachidonic acid yes here we will understand better from the membrane phospholipid with the help of enzyme phospholipase a2 from membrane phospholipid with the help of enzyme phospholipase a2 we got this arachidonic acid and from this arachidonic acid with the help of cyclooxygenase we got the cox with the help of the cyclooxygenase we got the prostaglandins various prostaglandins all these are the prostaglandins and with the help of lipooxygenase with the help of lipooxygenase we got the leukotriens now there are two types of cox enzymes or there are two isoforms cox1 and cox2 this cox1 is constitutive in nature and it is found in most of the tissues such as blood vessel kidney stomach platelets and this cox is the enzyme responsible for the various prostaglandins and thromboxane a2 also so for example various prostaglandins like pgi2 pgi2 means it helps in vasodilatation or inhibition of platelet aggregation pgf2 alpha pgf2 alpha it helps in decrease in the or reduction in the intraocular pressure pge2 it helps in gi protection platelet function kidney function then regulation of the blood flow then we have pgd2 in the role of vasodilatation bronchoconstriction then thromboxane a2 it it's a pro aggregatory or it's a platelet aggregation then regulation of the blood flow so all these are the 
prostaglandins and thromboxane A2 which is formed with the help of cyclooxygenase, COX-1 which is constitutive in nature, COX-2 which is inducible in nature, which is induced during inflammation by cytokines and various inflammatory mediators. Various inflammatory mediators like PGE2, PGI2, thromboxane A2, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukins, bradykinin, all these are the inflammatory mediators and these COX-2 or these prostaglandins, they are responsible for the pain, inflammation and fever. They are responsible for pain, inflammation and fever. So we have seen this, how they are synthesized. COX act on arachidonic acid to produce cyclic endoperoxidase like PG, G2 and PGH2. So these are the unstable prostaglandins. Platelets. Platelets contain the enzyme thromboxane synthetase which results in the formation of thromboxane A2. How thromboxane A2 is formed? Platelet contain thromboxane synthetase which results in the formation of thromboxane A2. Then vascular endothelium. Vascular endothelium contains prostacyclin synthase and thus produces PGI2. So various cells contains enzyme thiosomerase and converts cyclic endoperoxidase to the PGD2, PGE2 and PGF2 alpha. There is a formation of various prostaglandins. Now these are the membrane phospholipid. Now we will see the mechanism of the different drugs or targets. As we have seen this membrane phospholipid is converted into arachidonic acid. So this phospholipase A2 is the rate limiting enzyme because it converts phospholipids into arachidonic acid. So steroids, how they act? By inhibiting this enzyme, phospholipase A2. Steroids, they act by inhibiting this enzyme, phospholipase A2. Now after formation of arachidonic acid, there is a formation of prostaglandins with the help of this cyclooxygenase. So NSAIDs like aspirin, paracetamol, nimsulide, ibuprofen, diclofenac, all these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they act by inhibiting this COX enzyme. They act by inhibiting this COX enzyme or cyclooxygenase so that these prostaglandins will not be synthesized. Then xyleutone. This xyleutone, they inhibit the 5-lipooxygenase and they will inhibit the synthesis of leukotrienes which are bronchoconstrictor in nature so that they are helpful in the treatment of bronchial asthma which is a 5-lipooxygenase inhibitor xyleutone. Then after the formation of leukotrienes they act on the cystinyl receptors. They act on cystinyl receptors and these leukotrienes are by acting on the cystinyl receptor they cause bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm. So we have the drugs like Zafirlucast or Montelukast. Zafirlucast or Montelukast, they act on these cystinyl leukotriene receptor. They inhibit the binding of leukotriene to this receptor and they causes bronchodilatation. Hence we can use this Montelukast or Zafirlucast in the treatment of bronchial asthma because they cause bronchodilatation by acting on cystinyl leukotriene receptors by acting on cystinyl leukotriene receptors now after that we'll see what are the various functions of these prostaglandins what are the various functions of prostaglandins first of all prostaglandins they are responsible for pyrexia it causes pyrexia or fever it is responsible for pyrexia or fever it also sensitizes the nerve endings, peripheral nerves, and that's why it is responsible for the pain. Pyrexia, P for prostaglandin, P for pyrexia, then P for prostaglandin, P for sensitization of the peripheral nerves, which leads to the pain. Then it decreases peripheral or it decreases pulmonary and coronary resistance. It decreases peripheral or pulmonary and coronary resistance so we can use these drugs in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension then prostaglandins also helps 
in maintenance of the patency of the ductus arteriosus in the neonates with congenital heart disease until surgery until surgery it maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus in neonates with congenital heart disease then it also helpful in the pulmonary hypertension that we have already discussed because it decreases the pulmonary and coronary resistance then it decreases the intraocular pressure so we can use in the treatment of glaucoma then what are the other uses what is the effect on uterus it causes abortion cervical ripening or cervical priming it is also helpful in induction of labor or postpartum hemorrhage what are the uses of this prostaglandins on uterus it may use in abortion cervical priming or ripening of the cervix induction of labor postpartum hemorrhage it is also helpful in the erectile dysfunction it is also helpful in promoting healing of peptic ulcer increase peristaltic movement or there is a diarrhea or purging effect that is the effect on git we will discuss this in detail and it also helps in prevention of platelet aggregation prostaglandin to prevent the platelet aggregation we use this prostaglandin so all these are the uses or effects of prostaglandins